Hello, and welcome to the Software Carpentry Lecture on Python. In this episode, we will look at audio programming for Python. In particular, we'll be looking at a package called Audiolab. We'll look at how to read an audio file, play an audio buffer, and how to write an audio buffer back to file. Before we begin working with audio files, we need to understand what is digital audio. Digital audio is like a digital clock. You can tell time using an analog clock or a digital clock. It is merely a representation of a continuous signal as a series of discrete numbers. Instead of telling the time, the discrete numbers that we are using are measurements of a sound pressure wave at a specific point in time. Digital audio is measured at a sampling rate. A sampling rate is the rate at which the sound wave is measured. Higher sampling rates mean that more samples are measured in one second, or that more data is collected per second. The sampling rate determines the highest audio frequency, which can be thought of as the pitch, that can be captured. The faster the sampling rate, the higher the audio frequency that can be represented by that signal. CDs have sampling frequencies of 44.1 kilohertz, or 44,100 samples for every second of audio. This means that it can represent up to 22 kilohertz in the audio frequency spectrum. The bit depth, or bit width, is the precision of each sample. Larger bit depths mean that the audio is measured more precisely. It also means it's a larger number used to represent each audio sample. CDs measure samples with 16 bits. So how are audio samples stored on a computer? Audio is commonly stored in the WAV file format. The WAV format has header information at the beginning, which tells the computer what the sampling rate and bit depth is for the digital audio samples. After the header are the audio samples themselves. The header also lists how many channels of audio there are in the file. If there is more than one channel of audio, for instance, stereo audio is two channels. Short sections of each audio channel are alternated. While WAV files have header and then the samples listed after them, file formats like MP3s don't store a list of samples. The samples undergo psychoacoustic compression to reduce the number of total bytes needed to represent the audio recording. But the file format is similar to a WAV file, as there is header information at the beginning and then audio data. We will now discuss how you do audio signal processing in Python so that you can work with these audio samples. We will cover how to read an audio data from a file, play that audio data from Python, and output audio data back to a file. We will use the Python module Audiolab, but we'll quickly review some other available modules at the end. Python has very limited built-in functionality for audio, so it's necessary to use third-party modules. You should refer to the episode on libraries if you need a quick review on how to work with external functions. Audiolab is a simple set of modules with fewer dependencies than other options, but is also less interactive and less flexible. To install Audiolab, go to the link listed here for full documentation. You can also find binaries at PyPy, or you can install from source from the GitHub repository. In order to install Audiolab, you will need NumPy. If you install from the binary, libsumfile is included, but if you install from source, you will need to also install libsumfile separately. We've included a link to download libsumfile. So why are we using Audiolab? One large benefit of it is that it has a MATLAB-like interface. So if you're familiar with using functions in MATLAB like WaveRead, then you already know how to use the basics of Audiolab. It can also read and write the file using data in NumPy arrays. Audiolab can also play back audio, though it can't do anything else while the audio is playing. This is called blocking. It is also limited to reading and writing WAV, AIFF, EARCAM, AUG, AU, and FLAC files only. It can't handle anything like AAC or MP3. We'll first go over how to read an audio file. In MATLAB, this is what we would typically type in to read a WAV file. You would include the path to the file, and then Y would be the audio data that would be returned, with FS being the sampling rate of the file, N bits being the, the bit depth of the audio file. Then Wavery could also return other optional information that would be included in the header. So to use Audiolab, this is what we would type in Python to read a WAV file if we want to use the MATLAB-like interface. You would import the method from the subpackage. So you have from scikits.audiolab import WaveRead. Like MATLAB, you would include the path to the WAV file, and then you would be returned the NumPy array of the audio data, the sampling rate of the audio file, and the encoding format. However, Audiolab also has other ways that you can read in a WAV file if you don't want to use the MATLAB-like interface. You can instead use the sound file object. 
So you would import the necessary packages. Then you would create a sound file object, which has the path to the wave file. Also notice that you have the character R as the second argument to show that you're reading in a file. You can then read in the header information that you would like to know. This could include the sample rate, the number of channels, the type of encoding, and the number of samples or the number of frames of audio that are available. We can then read in a section of the audio data. Here we're reading in 1,000 frames and storing it in a NumPy array called data. Notice that we have to declare the data type or dtype is equal to a NumPy float 32. So when we read the data from a WAV file, we create a NumPy array containing the audio samples. The number of rows in that array is determined by the number of samples that have been read in. The number of columns is the number of audio channels in the original audio file. So if it's a mono audio file, there's only one channel and one column. If it is a stereo file, then there are two audio channels stored in two columns. Once the audio data is read into a NumPy array, we can use NumPy and any other packages as we would for any NumPy array. So after importing NumPy, let's say that we have an array called data, which contains audio frames. If we want to find the maximum value of the signal, for instance, we would just need to find the absolute value of the maximum of data. So ABS of MAX of data, which is the array holding the audio frames. If we want to find the RMS, the root mean square, of the first channel of the signal, we would take only the first channel, or the first column of the array, square it, then find the sum of all of those values, and then find the square root of that sum. Now we will cover how to play an audio buffer from Audiolab. First we need to know that when we want to play an audio buffer, or write to an audio file, Audiolab expects that the audio samples will be between negative 1 and 1. Anything that falls outside this range will be clipped, meaning that the values will be truncated. So if you have a value of 1.5, it's only going to be played as a value of 1, or written to file as a value of 1. So using NumPy, let's create an audio buffer which contains one second of stereo noise at a sampling rate of 48 kilohertz. First we need to import the required packages. So we import NumPy and import Audiolab, in particular importing the play method. We then create an array of random values. We do this using the random sample method inside the random sample package in NumPy. By creating an array that has two columns and 48,000 samples, we have two channels of audio, so stereo audio, and one second of audio when played at a sampling rate of 48 kilohertz. We then call the play method, with the first argument being our buffer, or our array, holding our audio data. And then we need to use a keyword argument to indicate that the sampling rate won't be 44,100 hertz, but instead will be 48,000 hertz. And again, we need to make sure that the audio samples are only floating point values within negative 1 and 1. Any values outside that range will clip. And now we will cover how to write an array to file. First, we import the required packages, including format and sound file from audio. And then we need to create data to output. So once again, we're creating one second of stereo noise. And then we need to create a sound file instance for writing WAV files with a sampling rate of 48 kilohertz. So we use the format object to create a description of the header information needed for creating a WAV file. Then we create a sound file instance. And the path in the file name of the file is the first argument, which includes the extension of the file. Then we have w for writing the file. The format instance that we created above is the third argument. Then we have the number of channels, in this case 2, and the sampling rate, 48,000. We will then write the frames of the signal to file. And then we clean up afterwards and close the file. So that's the basics of what you can do with Audiolab. But there are other available libraries that may be suitable for what you want to do. Two in particular are SWMixer and Brian Hears. Now the SWMixer has more dependencies, but is a far more powerful audio engine, while Brian Hears provides a lot of key functionality for psychoacoustics research. In order to install and use SWMixer, just visit this link. SWMixer does have a large number of dependencies, which include PyAudio, which is built on top of Poor Audio. NumPy, MAD, and PyMAD if you'd like to use MP3 support. And now that's the benefit of using SW Mixer. It does support WAVE and MP3. It can read and write to file from NumPy arrays, 
and can play back audio. In particular, it can play back audio without blocking, which means it can be used in interactive applications with more playback control. In particular, SW Mixer is, is created to use with Pygame, a framework for creating interactive video games. SW Mixer can stream from file, which is great if you have large files or a lot of files, as it means you don't have to load the entire audio file into memory. In addition, it can record audio from a microphone. To install Brian here, you can use Easy Install Brian if you have Easy Install in your system, and additional documentation is available at this link. Brian Hears also has a number of dependencies. This includes NumPy, SciPy, PyLab, SimPy is optional, and you can use Pygame if you want to use audio playback. It supports the file formats WAV and AIFF, can generate test tones easily, and is very good for psychoacoustics work, as it has built-in functions for plots such as spectrograms and some psychoacoustic models. It does need Pygame to play back any sounds from Python. So what factors should you be looking at to choose what audio library you should be using inside of Python? You should ask yourself, do I need to play audio? Do I need to be able to play it in an interactive way? What file formats do I need to support? WAVE or perhaps something else such as MP3? Will I be using large files or a lot of files at the same time? If yes to these, then SW Mixer is probably the audio package that you want to use. But if you ask yourself, am I doing auditory modeling or psychoacoustics research, and I'm not concerned with memory constraints, or perhaps I'm only using WAVE or AIFF, then Brian Hears may be the best package. But if you only need to read in audio files, and perhaps write them out to file again after some simple processing, then Audiolab will certainly suffice. However, as all of these libraries use NumPy as the format to store the audio samples, you can mix and match the libraries to suit your needs. If you're doing a lot of audio signal processing, the method that you use to read in and, and write out to file is probably not the most important part. You'll probably need to be more familiar with NumPy and SciPy in order to take advantage of signal processing functionality within Python. But again, all of this requires a certain comfort level with Python.